Welcome to the Philippine Motor Show. This is Auto Focus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here's a menu of some of our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market. A subcompact SUV from Sangyong, the 2020 Tivoli 1.6 liter diesel premium automatic. And another subcompact SUV from Kia, the 2019 Sportage 2 liter 4x2 GT line. We'll also have a glimpse of some of the latest automobile models and concept cars from around the world. This week, we have the 2020 Nissan Navara and Guard and the 2020 Audi RS4 Avant Bronze Edition. Plus, a feature to feature comparison of two subcompact sedans the 2019 Honda Brio and the 2019 Kia Soluto together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry. We shall have recently held 2020 Singapore Motor Show featuring Motor Image Pilipinas on our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Auto Focus and we'll be right back after this short break. Okay? Excuse me. <coughs> Let's go! Thank you. You always have my back. Have fun. I will. I'm 36. I'm a husband, a manager, and still very good looking. In two hours, I have the most important meeting of my life. But first, it's time to play. The new Suzuki Vitara. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review for the latest automobile models from Sangyong. Sangyong Philippines has brought in a new SUV in the game, which now comes in diesel variant. We're spotlighting the newcomer in this car review. Watch this.
That was all about the Sangyong Tivoli, an SUV that's designed with the driver and passenger's comfort and convenience in mind. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. I'm 36. I'm a husband, a manager, and still very good looking. In two hours, I have the most important meeting of my life. But first, it's time to play. The new Suzuki Vitara. Designed to get back from any adventure. Every day without fail. I'm getting Being tough is not enough, so we keep testing. In the pursuit of ultimate toughness and reliability, the new Strata, engineered beyond tough. Drive your ambition, Mitsubishi Motors. Welcome back to Autofocus, and we now have the latest auto industry news. In line with its first anniversary in the Philippine market, Kia Philippines took members of the motoring media on a ride and drive to Costa Pacifica, Baler, on board 10 units of the new Kia Seltos. We are here on a two-day uh, ride and drive trip, road trip with our media friends, 38 participants over hundreds of kilometers. Uh, we had a short stop in uh, Nueva Ecija and we've been going through kilometers of good paved roads mixed with rough roads, straight and twisties, uh, all trying to test the metal of the Kia models that we have today. The team headed up North Luzon en route to the scenic coastal province of Baler. The route was a mix of stretches of open highway and twisty mountain roads. These conditions allowed the drivers to experience the pull from the Celta's 2.0-liter dual CVVT-equipped motor that produces 149 PS of power and 179 Nm of torque. Made it to Kia's intelligent variable transmission with Drive Mode Select, the engine transmission combo allowed drivers to enjoy their choice of relaxed, economical cruising or a bit of fun out of the open roads. The models we have here are 10 vehicles, uh, 10 units of the Kia Seltos. We have all three variants here in various colors, all available, and that's the uh, lineup that we have. Plus the Sorento, the Forte, the Rio is also here, and we also brought along the Sportage. Several units are uh, all rolling in one convoy. Besides driving Kia's newest offering, the anniversary drive was a celebration of Kia's first year under Ayala-owned AC Motors with a 124% sales growth in 2019, brought about by new model launches Soluto, Stinger, and Celtos. According to Kia, the two-day Kia anniversary drive is a commitment of excellence for the Philippine customers. I'd like to invite everyone to uh, come and visit our dealers nationwide so that you can have a view and real experience of the models that we have in store. Also wait for the announcement that we will make as we make more unboxing surprises from the brand that's known for the power to surprise, Kia. The Society of Philippine Motoring Journalists, or SPMJ, recently held the judging ceremonies for the fourth Driven to Serve Awards. With a total of 16 entries submitted by nine auto manufacturers and importers, 
The categories were divided into four, namely education and training, environment, community development, and road safety. The judging ceremony was graced by the presence of seven notable and distinguished personalities from the business, academe, and transportation sectors who served as the panel of judges. Mr. Sergio Ortiz Luis Jr., Honorary Chairman and Treasurer, Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Attorney Romulo Junji Kimbo, Head Communication and Stakeholder Management, Metro Pacific Tollways Corporation and Lex Corporation. Ms. Maria Belen Blen Fernando, Chairwoman, Philippine Association of National Advertisers Foundation. Mr. Linus Crisme Canamo, National Sales Manager, Clorox International Philippines Incorporated. Ms. Charmaine Vaflor Canillas, General Manager, Petron Foundation. Ms. Catherine Marie Colmenares Cabrillos, Manager, First Philippine Holdings Corporation. An initiative like this is always something that is a welcome program for any company because I think it makes the company and the employees and specifically the people involved in marketing think beyond just the numbers, the sales, the units sold or how much is the sale this month. It pushes them to think about their role in society, in the community and even in the country. And you know, what's really very interesting are, uh, is that some of the cases shown are very specific to the community where the manufacturing plants of the cars or their offices are located. So they're really thinking about their community, how to help them, how to mobilize the resources, and how to engage the people living in the place. So that's something I think that may not exist in other case studies that I've seen, but it's very predominant here. So I guess that's really the direction that these car companies are taking. It's commendable that these car companies are looking at doing community projects beyond the business and really looking into how to assist their host communities and other communities in the country and bringing to the front mobility using their brand. It's also commendable that some have gone the extra mile and did more than what was expected from their CSR programs. It was a good experience. It's good to know and to appreciate that companies take time to reach out to communities and make sure that this is part of what they do. Our life is not just about us and it's good to witness companies doing the same. It's not just about profits, making money, but also making a difference to communities. Even as judges, even if you're handling already CSR in your own respective organization, you get to appreciate what the others are doing. As was mentioned earlier when we were briefed, actual CSR, you don't talk about it. Right. So it's such a nice discovery that a lot of the companies, especially the motoring companies, are very well into it. So it was a very good experience for me. Toyota Motor Philippines has officially introduced Atsuhiro Okamoto as TMP's incoming president in a formal ceremony witnessed by members of the business community at the Grand Hyatt Manila. The event highlighted TMP's success in the past four years under the leadership of outgoing president Satoru Suzuki. The highlight for me during a stay in the Philippines for TMP, number one is the, uh, our participation to the TAS program. I hope that it can contribute to the uh, Philippine economy or employment, uh, everything to the uh, Filipino society. The number two is the, uh, I joined the uh, Bios Cup racing, so it was my first time to join the uh, car racing, but uh, it was so tough, then I hope it could help to making a good reputation of a Bios Cup racing to the public. So, well, well many, many other, other issues I experienced, uh, but uh, most of them, it was a very good uh, experience for me, so I really miss the Philippines. Suzuki left the helm on a high note with TMP's achievement of record-breaking market share of 39.5% and 18th consecutive Triple Crown by end of 2019. TMP's business also grew with the introduction of new Toyota models and the expansion of its distribution network nationwide with additional 23 dealers to better serve the needs of the market. Leading TMP's path 
towards offering new mobility solution is incoming president Atsuhiro Okamato. Basically, it's a continuation of what we have started, no? And of course, the CARS program plus other investment plans, other projects in the pipeline. During Okamoto's time, there will be new projects as well as a continuation of existing projects. Yes. In his speech, Okamoto said all TMP team members, dealers and suppliers alike, the importance of dedicating our work to contribute to society. He added that they will continuously do so by providing ever better cars and services to enhance the quality of life of Filipinos. Out of focus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine takes another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. Dad, naflatan kami. Dad? Dad? You okay? Iwan mo na yan. Ako na bahala dyan. Let's go. Atid ko na kayo. Tara. Excuse me. <coughs> Let's go! Thank you. You always have my back. Have fun. I will. Your journey, the new Montero Sport. Drive your ambition, Mitsubishi Motors. I'm 36, I'm a husband, a manager, and still very good looking. In two hours, I have the most important meeting of my life. But first, it's time to play. Suzuki Vitara. Welcome back to this edition of Autofocus, the country's premier automobile TV and online magazine. Here's Head to Head, our feature to feature comparison of the latest automobile models belong to the same category. Subcompact sedans are among the most in-demand vehicles in the market today, and it's undeniable that it's because of the convenience and comfort that they offer. On this head-to-head, -head, we have the 2019 Honda Brio and the 2019 Kia Soluto, two models whose names keep on making waves. Watch this. Under the hood of the Honda Brio is a powerful 1.2-liter, four-cylinder SOHC IVTEC engine that is capable of producing 90 horsepower and 110 Nm of torque. These figures are mated to a continuously variable transmission developed based on Honda's Earth Dreams technology. This transfers all power to front wheels. Meanwhile, Powering the Kia Soluto is a fuel-efficient 1.4-liter dual CCVT gasoline engine that produces 95 horsepower and 132 Nm of torque. The engine is coupled with a 4-speed automatic transmission that transfers all power to front wheels. After the oily bit, let's check out the exterior features of our two featured cars. The Brio's design and styling exudes sporty vibes. The exterior is highlighted by its honeycomb front grille that's further framed with multi-reflector halogen headlights with LED parking light guides. The large glass panel that used to be present in the rear has been replaced by a new design. On top of that, this variant comes with an RS Design gloss black front grille, RS Design side sill garnish, 
and rear bumper garnish, tailgate spoiler, and RS Design 15 inch alloy wheels. On the other hand, basing on its exterior stance, the Soluto is undeniably a Kia. These character lines give additional identity to the car. Add on top of it are the projector fog lamps that frame the front fascia. Meanwhile, over the rear, it's pretty plain, although a set of combination lamps manage to stand out. Other exterior features of the Saluto are the chrome door handles, pole-type antenna, electric adjustable side mirrors with LED side repeaters, and these 14-inch alloy wheels. It's time to step inside the Brio and the Saluto. Inside, the Brio offers ample cabin space as well as improved legroom. This is attributed to the 60mm extended wheelbase and 90mm extended cargo depth. The seats are wrapped in leather material and are further highlighted by orange accents. For added convenience, the Brio comes available with power windows, power door locks, manual with digital display air conditioning system, an accessory socket at the front, among others. On the other hand, the Saluto's dashboard and other areas are covered mostly in hard plastic, while the seats are wrapped in leather. On top of that, the driver's seat comes with an armrest and height adjuster. When it comes to space, the Saluto offers enough of it for passengers to move freely when traveling. For added convenience, the Saluto comes with a rotary temperature control, 360 rotatable air ducts, cup holders, rear door power windows, and rear view monitor with parking guidance. Let's talk about the infotainment systems of the respective subcompact sedans. The Brio is equipped with a 7-inch capacitive touchscreen display that is available in Bluetooth, audio streaming, and USB port. Six speakers are available for the driver and passengers to enjoy the sound. Meanwhile, the Saluto comes with a 7-inch touchscreen with AM-FM, MP3 with USB, and aux in. Sound is enjoyable through the six-speaker system. When it comes to safety and security, both the Brio and Saluto are equipped with necessary features. Considering that it has received a 4-star ASEAN NCAP safety rating, the Brio comes equipped with the essential active and passive vehicle safety features under Honda's G-Con technology. For one, it boasts a dual front driver and front passenger SRS airbags and anti-lock braking system as standard for all its variants. Meanwhile, the Saluto comes with the standard features such as anti-lock braking system with EBS and dual airbags, among other features. There we've seen the 2019 Honda Brio and the 2019 Kia Saluto go head to head. It's now up to you to decide which subcompact sedan you prefer better. More about the automobile here in Autofocus as we usher in our segment featuring the autos of the world. Spotlighting concept cars as well as newly launched and about to be launched automobile models from around the world. For your exciting viewing in this edition of your Automobile Electronic Magazine, we have the 2020 Nissan Navara and Guard. Let's watch this. Nissan has launched the latest Nissan Navara and Guard with the range topping double cab premium pickup now featuring a refreshed look. Enhancing the Navara and Guard's premium feel, the model now comes with four exterior paint color options including an electric blue joining the popular black, white, and gray. The pickup stands out thanks to noticeable details. Among them, eye-catching blue stitching for the leather seats, footwell illumination that highlights the floor and matte color accents, and decals on the outside panels. Perfectly complementing its stylish design, the Navara and Guard delivers tough off-road functionality to match its impressive form. 
The Nevera Enguard now features a spray-on liner for its load bed, which not only looks great, but also absorbs shocks and sounds. The new liner is therefore more resistant to all elements, making this the perfect pickup for both work and play. The new Navara Enguard offers impressive capabilities that make every Navara model a dependable companion on the road or off it. Able to tow up to 3,500 kilograms and carry over 1,100 kilograms of cargo across a wide variety of terrain. The recently upgraded four disc braking system and revised rear suspension also equip the model, making it easy to handle and control. The Enguard comes with Navera's 190 PS, 450 NM twin turbo engine and is available with a choice of 6-speed manual or 7-speed automatic transmission. Both versions come with Navera's proven part-time four-wheel drive system with low ratio for unstoppable off-road capability. I'm 36, I'm a husband, a manager, and still very good looking. In two hours, I have the most important meeting of my life. But first, it's time to play. The new Suzuki Vitara. Ano man ang marating, binabalikan pa rin. Ang mga unang pangarap, mga unang nakasama, mga unang aral, at ang unang naging gabay sa biyahe ko sa buhay. Oh Joshua, napauwi ka! Siyempre, miss ko na first love ko eh. Make more firsts with a Mitsubishi Mirage. Drive your ambition. Mitsubishi Motors. Be it fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Illustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Illustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Illustrado restaurant, only for the foodies. Welcome back to Autofocus. Our special feature is next. Subaru recently brought innovation and excitement to the 2020 Singapore Motor Show by introducing three new Subaru models, namely the Forester E-Boxer, Forester GT Edition, and the Impreza. We have the highlights of Subaru's exciting displays during the event in this special feature. Watch this. Motor Image, the exclusive distributor of Subaru vehicles in Singapore, flew members of the motoring media to the Lion City to witness the launch of three new Subaru models at the 2020 Singapore Motor Show. Here at the Motor Show, Subaru has launched the Forester GT Edition and the Forester E-Boxer. The Subaru E-Boxer will be the first model in the Philippines lineup to have hybrid technology and we are very excited to bring it by the second half of the year as it will be a good alternative for Filipino buyers who want fuel economy and want to be eco-friendly. As presented, the all-new Forester e-boxer has a self-charging, mild hybrid e-boxer system. This combines battery-powered electric motor assistance with two of Subaru's core technologies, boxer engine and symmetrical all-wheel drive. 
with eBoxer. The Forester now offers smoother and more responsive acceleration, enhanced off-road capability, and better efficiency. The eBoxer system is capable of automatically and effortlessly switching between three driving modes, EV, engine, and motor assist. In EV mode, power is supplied only by the electric motor. EV mode activates in driving conditions where petrol engine power is not efficient, such as when the vehicle is accelerating from rest or in slow traffic. If more power is needed or the battery charge level is low, the engine turns on to switch to either motor assist or engine mode. Moreover, Motor Image has also launched the Forester GT Edition. It is the second GT Edition model being offered in Singapore with a special aero kit which has four well-made and integrated elements. For the Forester GT Edition, uh, Subaru has partnered with Geeken, uh, headed by Mr. Jaco Bayashi, who was highly involved in the development of several Subaru models such as the Leborg and the STI. And he has developed a special body kit previously for the XV GT and now for the Forester as well. The special GT Edition Aero Kit has four well-made and integrated elements, which give the rugged yet refined Forester a sleeker and even sportier look. Both the Forester E-Boxer and Forester GT Edition are equipped with the new 8-inch display audio system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity, and a 360-degree around-view monitor system, which enables drivers to park and maneuver with ease. Also at the Subaru booth in the Singapore Motor Show, we can see uh, several other models such as the new Impreza, both in sedan and hatchback versions. The new Subaru Impreza has an improved styling, convenience, and mechanical upgrades. It sports a revised front and rear fascia, inclusive of new LED headlamps and blacked-out tail lamps and new 17-inch wheels. Also, we have a Forester Ultimate Customized Kit Special, which is a souped-up Forester paying homage to Subaru's rally jeans. And for future Subarus, we are also displaying the Subaru Visive concept, the SUV edition, which is paving the way for the new design language of Subaru for the future models. The new Subaru Visive Adrenaline concept was also highlighted during the Singapore Motor Show 2020. It's the first concept vehicle designed under Subaru's new design philosophy. The local motoring media got the chance to test drive and see for themselves the safety and overall feel of these new Subaru models at the Subaru Safety Park test drive held at Singapore Expo. We are also happy to introduce the new Subaru Safety Park, which has different courses that highlights the safety of Subaru vehicles. We have one that highlights the SGP and EyeSight, and also one with focuses on RAB, Rear Assistive Braking, of the Subaru technologies. We also have Subaru's latest models here for everyone to see. For those who want to test drive a Subaru, all of our showrooms are open and are ready to accommodate you. Try the safety features of Subaru, the four core technologies. Any outlet will be available to assist you. That wraps up our special feature on the 2020 Singapore Motor Show. Bring the spotlight on Subaru and its introduction of three new models. And up next is another exciting feature on Autos of the World. This time around, the 2020 Audi RS4 Avant Bronze Edition. Let's watch this. Built for stealth with its Vesuvius gray paint, yet also shot through with a bold brass streak evident in its stunning 20-inch bronze milled wheels. The new RS4 Avant Bronze Edition is a car of contrasts. Limited to just 25 examples in the UK, this short-run addition to the RS4 range is available to order, now priced at £82,395 OTR, and features an exceptional standard specification that in some respects plays down the Super Avant's flared and muscle-bound stance, but in others renders it even more eye-catching. Updated externally in late 2019, 
by the latest Audi design hallmarks, and internally by an advanced new touchscreen MMI Touch operating system. The RS4 Avant is shown in a new light by the exclusive paint finish and distinctive wheels that set the bronze edition apart, and a number of key details help to complete the look. Starting up front, they include a high-gloss black finish for the single frame and front air intake surrounds, which are complemented by a matte carbon lip spoiler. In profile, black roof rails and window surrounds and matte carbon mirror housing also help to darken the mood, as does a matte carbon diffuser with a high-gloss black insert at the rear. The overlap between low-key and high-profile is also emphasized by the RS Sport exhaust system, which is another additional standard feature of the Bronze Edition that replaces the usual bright work of the two trademark oval RS tailpipe trims with black equivalent, and also amplifies the already strident soundtrack played by the 450 PS 2.9-liter TFSI. Dad? Dad? You okay? Iwan mo na yan. Ako na bahala dyan. Let's go. Atid ko na kayo. Tara! Excuse me? <coughs> Let's go! Thank you. You always have my back. Have fun. I will. I'm 36, I'm a husband, a manager, and still very good looking. In two hours, I have the most important meeting of my life. But first, it's time to play. The new Suzuki Vitara. Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions. The WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has anti-oxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate here on Autofocus as we have our second car review. When Kia Philippines relaunched in the country in 2019, it brought in new models to add to its existing lineup. One of these new models is the Kia Sportage, a car that brought thrill to the customers and car enthusiasts simply because of its new offerings. We have all about it in this car review. In this edition of Car Review, we are putting the spotlight on the 2019 Kia Sportage GT Line variant. Let's start with their respective powertrains. The fourth generation Sportage is powered by either an R2.0 liter common rail direct injection diesel engine for both the SL and GT line DSL variants, or a new 2.0 liter multi-point injection gas engine that comes with the SL gas variant. For the transmission, the Sportage is mated to a six-speed automatic transmission with Shiftronic and Shiftlock across all variants, 
but transfers all power to two wheels. More on the Sportage's figures. The SL Gas variant delivers 155 horsepower and 19.6 kgm. While both the SL and GT Line DSL variants produce 185 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. When it comes to handling, a smooth ride aboard the SL variant is managed by a McPherson strut at the front and a multi link at the rear, both of which are equipped with gas type shock absorbers. On the other hand, the GT Line uses a McPherson strut at the front and a multi link at the rear. Both are accompanied with a high performance damper. That's enough of the oily bit. Let's now go to the more exciting parts of our review. The exterior of the Sportage is one that is bold and tough looking, while also maintaining its ruggedness. At a glance, you can already tell that Kia wasn't mistaken when it said that the exterior of the Sportage is one of its best selling points. For one, the GT Line's front fascia is highlighted by its trademark Tiger grille that boasts projector type LED fog lights. Meanwhile, the rest of the variants get a standard bump. Meanwhile, over at the rear, an LED combination lamp is present. Additionally, the Sportage gets reshaped bumper corners, adding more character to the subcompact SUV. The GT Line powers through the road with 19-inch alloy wheels, while the other variants come with 17-inch. Other exterior features of Sportage include a front and rear skid plate exclusively for the GT Line, and a rear defogger as well as a rear spoiler that comes standard in all variants. Overall, the design and style of the Sportage is what to look out for. Meanwhile, the interior of the Sportage also mirrors the bold look outside. Everything in the GT line is wrapped in leather, the seats, the steering wheel, and every other part of the car, like the center console. For the other variants, they get the standard fabric material. The seats of the GT line are comfortable to sit on as well, again thanks to the premium leather material. Talking about space, which is important in every car, the Sportage offers ample space for all passengers to feel comfortable through the ride. For added cargo, the rear seats are foldable, so that's a plus. Moreover, the Sportage focuses on added convenience as well. The steering wheel also comes with tilt and telescopic adjust configuration, and cruise control is also standard in all variants. Also, the air conditioning in the GT Line comes with dual, full auto climate control, while the rest of the variants get the manual type. For the infotainment system, all Sportage variants come equipped with a 3.5-inch LCD display that is available in AM, FM, CD, MP3, aux in, and USB port and is iPod ready. Sound is enjoyable courtesy of 6 speakers. When it comes to safety, the Sportage is loaded with features that ensure nothing less such as dual and side curtain airbags, anti-lock brake system, security alarm, immobilizer, and stability control among others. That was all about the 2019 Kia Sportage, a subcompact SUV that is considered a strong competitor in its market. Hi, this is Sydney, and today we'll be talking about the Supercharger. Superchargers and turbochargers, you hear these two terms thrown around interchangeably and can't really blame the people on the internet because they don't really know what it is they have no idea what it looks like much less know how it works so we've covered turbochargers in a past topic so this time we'll be covering the supercharger so basically let's start with the similarities turbo and supercharger both of these things are called forced induction 
because you are force feeding more air into the engine. It's just that the way that they do it are different. A turbo uses the exhaust gases to spin a turbine that feeds air. A supercharger, on the other hand, uses a belt like this connected to the engine, connected to the alternator, water pump, air cone compressor that spins two rotors in here that also force more air in. Same principle, get more air, suck more air, blow more air, make more power. The main difference between the supercharger and turbocharger is of the hardware itself. Almost all turbochargers are two circular round things. Superchargers come in this rectangular package because inside here are two intermeshing lobes. They look like gears. So what they basically do is it's also an air pump. It goes like this, air goes in, gets forced out, creates pressure. Nothing different from a turbocharger in terms of principal operation, but how it operates is one is belt driven, one is exhaust driven. Now, let's address the popular notion, oh, superchargers are, have parasitic laws and all of that. No, it's not true. Whatever you read, once again, it's not true. Yes, it takes some energy to turn this, but that energy is a lot less than what the energy that it gives. Because if it is parasitic loss, and you're actually using more energy to turn this than what it makes, then there's no point in installing this in the first place. Let's put that in numbers. To turn this thing here, the assembly here with the lobes inside, takes about 5 horsepower from the engine. But what this gives you in return is about 40 horsepower on this 1.5 liter Honda City engine. So power-wise, for a 1.5 engine, we're adding 40 horsepower more. Basically, the behavior is like stuffing a big 2.4 liter engine into a car this small. That's the easiest way to describe the driving style and result of a supercharger. It feels like a big engine. The power curve is actually a straight line from idle all the way to red line. It's one straight line. No dips, no curves, no nothing. And it's very, very linear, which makes it a great choice for racing because unlike turbochargers, which have surged and sometimes, depending on what size the turbo is, there's a lag when you let go. It's not very great when you're coming out of a corner. This is more predictable when it comes to driving and racing. So turbocharger, supercharger, which is better? One is not better than the other. One does not make more power than the other. If you're doing this on your project car, say a Civic 1.8, there is a limit to how much horsepower you can make. Go over that limit, whether it's turbo or supercharger, then you'll break the engine. It all depends on really what you want. And of course, how much you're going to pay. Some people may say, oh, I'll spend 200 grand on a supercharger for 40 horses. But if I do turbocharger, it's only 130, 140,000. I'll go with the cheaper option. Well, that's up to you. But the biggest advantage of a supercharger system is most of these things are made in kit form. So everything that you need to be able to install it comes with it. So this one here actually installs in one day. A custom turbo setup where everything will have to be fabricated from scratch will take about a week. That's the fastest to an average of a week and a half to two weeks. So you figure out how much your downtime is worth. So that's the how and why it works of a supercharger. And that's our focus this week. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, we hope you have found this edition of your automobile electronic magazine informative as well as entertaining. Don't forget to check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. Until the next time, this has been Ray Louis Gamboa.